Welcome to our recorded Mass here at All Saints Parish. Assisting us this morning are Fred Mulfinger is our lecturer. Tom Bogachutz is our cameraman and technician and guru. And Mike Wathlin is our supervisor. Today we're celebrating the Feast of the Ascension of the Lord. And we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, the Lord reminds us that we're supposed to be his witnesses. We're supposed to be people who reflect Jesus in this world. Let's take a moment to reflect on how well that's going. Lord Jesus, sometimes we seem to reflect your presence fairly well. Sometimes we fail miserably. So we pray, Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Fill us with joy, Almighty God, and make us rejoice in thanksgiving for the ascension of Christ your Son is our exaltation. And where he, the head, has gone before, we, the body, are called to follow in hope to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading today is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 1. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 1, and this is Luke's account of the ascension of Jesus into heaven. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over the course of 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set up by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God announced his throne to shouts of joy. God announced his throne to shouts of joy. All you peoples, clap your hands. Shout to God with cries of gladness. For the Lord, the Most High, the Awesome, is the great King over all the earth. God announced his throne to shouts of joy. God mounts his throne amidst shouts of joy, the Lord amidst trumpet blasts. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. God mounts his throne amidst <coughs> shouts of joy. For King of all the earth is God, sing hymns of praise. God reigns over the nations, 
God sits upon his holy throne. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy. The next reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, beginning with verse 17. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 17. And the word power is mentioned about four times in this reading. And Paul's talking about the power that God gives to Christ and the power that's passed on to us, his witnesses. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the work of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The next reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 26, beginning with verse 46. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 26, verse 46. And this is Luke's first account of the ascension of Jesus to heaven. We heard this second account in the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The Lord be with you. And with your Holy Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up to heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple, blessing God. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks to you, our Lord Jesus Christ. You will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. Have you ever thought of yourself as a witness? Have you ever been a witness in court? There's a story about a doctor, the coroner, who was called as a witness in a trial. And for the uh, testimony, the lawyer asked him, Doctor, before you started the autopsy, 
did you check his blood pressure? The doctor said no. The attorney said, did you check for a pulse? No. Did you check to see if he was breathing? No. Do you think he may have still been alive? No. Doctor, how can you be so certain that the man was actually dead? Doctor said, because his brain was in a jar on my desk. And the, the attorney pushed further, he said, well, is it at all possible that somehow he could have been still alive? And the doctor rolled his eyes and said, well, I guess there's a possibility that he may be in a courtroom somewhere practicing law. Well, witnesses are often not very reliable. We can have 10 people witnessing an accident right in front of them on a street corner and nine say it happened this way and the others, the 10 said, no, no, it happened this way. Um, witnesses are not terribly reliable, but our court system depends on them heavily. And we are to be witnesses. We are to reflect what Jesus is. We are Jesus, we are together, we are Jesus' body. None of us is that perfect to be his body ourselves, but together we are Jesus' body. And Father Andrew Greeley, you may have run across his work before, he's a sociologist, but he also wrote some novels. He tells a story about a politician who was running for office. He was a good man, he was, had a good platform, he was a good speaker, he was honest, but nobody knew him, he was unknown. And so, and he was running against somebody who was very well known, so the chances of him being elected were, were slim. But he had an advanced man who s were supposed to set things up for him because this guy had to go to lots of, give lots of talks, go to many meetings, go to parish socials, go to cocktail parties, go to tea parties, go to everything he could so he would be seen and noticed and known. Well, his advance man was not very good. He was a friend of his, so he was reluctant to let him go, but the advance man just wasn't very organized, which is the first requirement for an advance man. And finally, things were beginning to fall apart, and the advance man quit, but it was too late already, and he lost the election. But people were amazed that he only lost by one half of 1%. And people thought, had he had a good advance man, he could have won this election handily. And Greeley, Father Greeley asks, if you were an advance man for Jesus, is there any reason why he wouldn't fire you? Interesting question. Would Jesus keep, his, keep us on as one of his advanced people, advanced man, advanced woman? Who knows? But Jesus gave us the job. As the disciples now became apostles, we became apostles through the sacraments of baptism and confirmation. We're supposed to be his advanced people in this world, his witnesses. Let me tell you another little story, today's story time. There was a, a guy by the name of Bob, a young man who was just pretty well beaten down. He was alcoholic, but he really wasn't ready to admit it. And he was arrested for drunken driving and the judge sentenced him to a drug program and he went because he had to, but he didn't really believe in it. And the drug program pushed Alcoholics Anonymous and the 12 Steps, and particularly the part about higher power, which most people think of as God, he thought that was a joke. And when he got to the program, he was assigned to a sponsor kind of person named Murray. And Murray was pretty quiet. Murray listened a lot, asked a few questions, was very supportive. 
And it was said that Murray had an experience of God in his life. Murray didn't really talk about it, but people could kind of see something in him. Well, Bob eventually graduated from the program. He went out and got into trouble again. Soon he was back with another DUI, another job lost. He came back into the program humbled even more. And he said, I would like to have Murray as my sponsor again, because if there is a God, I believe he lives in Murray. I believe I've, I've seen him there on occasion. That's the kind of witness we are called to be. Nothing magnificent, nothing that requires we tell lots of good stories about how Jesus is at work, nothing that requires that we give speeches, just that we reflect Jesus in our lives. So let's just think about that for a moment and meditate and see how God's power is at work in us. And he, have we been able to witness that power to anyone else in this world? We believe that Jesus calls us to be his witnesses in this world. Not perfect, but witnesses. Let's profess that faith together using the Apostles' Creed. We believe in God, God Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, 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 on the third, third day, day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father of our life. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of our sons. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, you have invested your church with a mission and power to change hearts and transform our world. Grant us the faith to fulfill this work. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who bear the unimaginable pain of losing a child from these school shootings, help them to bear that cross. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Help our nation to find the way out of this senseless violence and create a society where all children can safely go to school and grow up. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Make us ambassadors of your peace to courageously take up the struggle against sin and the evils that have become rooted in our society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Stop the senseless war in the Ukraine and move hearts to seek lasting peace through negotiation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who bear the burden of illness, grant them healing and strength in spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We remember our loved ones who have passed on from this life, especially Bernice Rehrman. Grant them a place in your heavenly kingdom. We pray, we pray to, to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who gave their life in service to our country and for our well-being, Reward them for their sacrifice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear you are our prayer. Lord God, we ask that you hear these prayers and all the prayers in our hearts.
answer us as you see best. Help us accept your answer to our prayer. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise of our God's name, for our good to good of all this whole church. We offer sacrifice now, O Lord, in honor of the wondrous ascension of your Son, and grant that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your sister spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the Lord Jesus, the King of glory, conqueror of sin and death, ascended to the highest heavens as the angels gazed in wonder. Mediator between God and us, judge of the world and Lord of hosts, he ascended not to distance himself from our lowly state, but that we, his members, his body, might be confident of following where he, our head and founder, has gone before. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as we acclaim, Holy holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by setting down your spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. This is the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy and the people of God. Remember Bernice Rehrman and all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Anthony, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the kingdom the power, power, and the glory of the Lord, 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 Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let's offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should come under my roof.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.